Dear readers, welcome to our channel. In today's video, let's talk about two aerospace events. One, a small Japanese probe tumbled headfirst onto the moon. Two, the American Falcon's one-day tour in the sky ended in atmospheric descent. The key to these two failures lies in the inability to control the spacecraft's attitude properly. In the vast space, lacking reference points, how can we ensure that spacecraft fly in the correct orbit? As space enthusiasts, how do you think we can ensure that spacecraft fly in the correct attitude in this boundless space? This question involves a crucial aerospace technology, inertial guidance. Inertial guidance, represented by gyroscope guidance, achieves precise positioning in three-dimensional space by using a stable surface as a reference, combined with other measurement data such as direction, altitude, and air pressure. Now that we've discussed this, let's formally introduce a centenarian in today's video, academician Liu Yuanqing, a member of both the Chinese Academy of Sciences and the Chinese Academy of Engineering, and a recipient of the July 1st medal. Under Liu's leadership, China's high-end aerospace equipment for inertial guidance is no less advanced than others, ensuring that China's carrier rockets, satellites, intercontinental missiles, and more do not get lost in the vastness of space. Liu Yuanqing, born on January 9, 1920, in Chuzhou, Anhui, was one of the pioneers in automation science and technology in China, an expert in gyroscopes, inertial navigation, and automatic control, a member of the Chinese Academy of Sciences, a member of the Chinese Academy of Engineering, and a recipient of the July 1st medal. In 2023, Liu passed away at the age of 103. In 1945, Liu became one of the first group of publicly funded students to study in the United States. He obtained his Ph.D. in instrumentation at MIT in 1949. After graduating, he was appointed as an associate researcher and research engineer at MIT. After the founding of the People's Republic of China, he was eager to return to his homeland. At the end of 1955, Liu passed by the post office and found a small notice on the bulletin board with both Chinese and English. The notice roughly stated, according to the agreement reached between China and the United States in Geneva, Chinese people in the United States, including students, who wish to return to China can now start their journey. In case of difficulties, you can contact the Indian Embassy in the United States for assistance. Seeing this news, Liu was excited, feeling like an arrow returning home. He quickly started the procedures and booked tickets. However, things were far from smooth as he imagined. He had to face a series of difficulties such as passport issues and obtaining epidemic prevention certificates. After many efforts, Liu successfully overcame various obstacles and, in April 1956, boarded a ship with his wife and three children, heading for the motherland. On May 23, 1956, Liu Yuanqing set foot on the land of his homeland. After returning, he quickly immersed himself in scientific and technological work, taking on important positions, leading the establishment of research institutes, and providing constructive suggestions for the development of industrial automation through domestic and international research. In the journey of building a technologically strong China, he, like a diligent sower, laid a solid foundation for China's scientific and technological undertakings. In 1958, Chairman Mao Zedong announced, China also wants to launch artificial satellites. At an important conference of the Chinese Academy of Sciences, Liu Yuanqing delivered a speech on satellite control. He proposed researching the automatic control of artificial satellites and emphasized using control means to recover them. At that time, there was no publicly available information on satellite recovery abroad. This conference can be considered a landmark moment as the first time the concept of satellite recovery was introduced to the world. After the conference, the leadership group for China's first satellite, the 581 mission, was established. Liu Yuanqing was one of the members and actively participated in formulating the development plan for artificial satellites. The group believed that although China had a rocket research institution established with the help of the Soviet Union, it still needed to strive for self-reliance and develop an independent space technology system. In the following years, Liu Yuanqing led the team to overcome numerous challenges, actively created conditions, and undertook multiple defense tasks, 
mainly focusing on missile control systems. At the same time, he cultivated a research team that dared to strive. In 1961, he became the deputy director of the institute. In 1965, according to the needs of National Economic Construction and Defense Construction, the Central Special Committee issued three defense tasks to the Chinese Academy of Sciences, including the development of the first artificial satellite and the development of the liquid floating gyroscope. With his reputation in the field of inertial navigation, Liu Yuanqing became the ideal candidate for the technical director of the liquid floating gyroscope development task. From then on, he dedicated the second half of his life entirely to China's inertial navigation cause. For Liu Yuanqing, this period of work was a crucial process in China's space technology development path. What profound impact do you think this period had on the development of China's aerospace industry? As the father of inertial navigation, a proud disciple of MIT professor C.S. Draper and the first PhD student in the field of inertial navigation, Liu Yuanqing has a solid theoretical foundation and practical experience. At the beginning of the development of the inertial navigation system for rockets and satellites, Liu Yuanqing started considering this important work. He adhered to the guiding ideology of element-based, with testing equipment taking the lead. Despite facing a lack of information, with only a Soviet booklet Liquid Floating Euro and its application and an American guidebook, Inertial Guidance, by Professor Draper, Liu Yuanqing and his team continued to advance. Utilizing existing equipment and using a practical approach, they gradually overcame key technologies. During team discussions, Liu Yuanqing had a habit. At the beginning of the discussion, he would take off his watch and place it on the table, checking the time at crucial moments. Sometimes a discussion would last the entire morning, covering electrical and mechanical aspects meticulously, leaving no room for oversight of any individual component. Colleagues recalled that Liu Yuanqing's rigorous and scientific attitude left a deep impression. He emphasized speaking with data, often saying, no matter how good the plan sounds, I won't believe it until I see the data. During that time, the 40-something Liu Yuanqing chose to live in the office to save time for work, ensuring that the project progressed in an orderly manner. In 1965, China's first prototype of the liquid floating gyroscope, namely, the I-type liquid floating gyroscope, was unveiled in Changchun. Liu Yuanqing and the team successively completed the development of the two-type, three-type liquid floating gyroscopes, accelerometers, stable platforms, and critical testing equipment represented by China's first large precision centrifuge. Meanwhile, Liu Yuanqing also taught courses at the University of Science and Technology of China, offering a specialized course in Euro mechanics and inertial navigation. Lacking suitable teaching materials, he took it upon himself to write the lecture notes. Liu Yuanqing usually wrote the speech before bedtime and then printed it as lecture notes. Based on this, he spent about a year organizing and writing Euro and Inertial Navigation Principles, Volume 1. Euro and Inertial Navigation Principles, Volume 1, incorporates Liu Yuanqing's learning and thoughts. This book changed the traditional approach of discussing Euro and Inertial Navigation Principles from a mechanical perspective, adopting the viewpoint and methods of automatic control, providing in-depth explanations. It became the earliest monograph on Chinese inertial technology and an essential tool for professionals in related fields at that time. Unfortunately, the manuscript of Euro and Inertial Navigation Principles, Volume 2, was lost during the Cultural Revolution, causing irreparable damage. Later, a high-precision centrifuge project led by him won the National Science and Technology Progress First Prize. In 1978, at the age of 58, Liu Yuanqing left the 502 Institute. In 1981, he concurrently served as the chief engineer of the 7th Ministry. In 1984, he was transferred to become a standing committee member of the Science and Technology Committee of the Ministry of Aerospace Industry, actively participating in important aerospace positions. During the 45 years when academician Liu Yuanqing left the 5th Academy, he contributed valuable wealth to the field of automatic control and inertial navigation carrying forward the scientific spirit. Over the years, 
he has been concerned about the development of the Fifth Academy and the 502 Institute, not only providing guidance as a technical expert multiple times but also encouraging the Institute to make greater contributions to the aerospace cause. Today, China's aerospace has undergone more than 60 years of development. Since the successful launch of the first artificial satellite, Dongfeng Hong-1, the Fifth Academy has successfully developed and launched more than 400 spacecraft, and the 502 Institute has continuously achieved breakthroughs in key core technologies, providing strong support for exploring the vast universe, developing the aerospace industry, and building an aerospace power. The cause is flourishing. Finally, let me summarize for the readers. I hope you have gained some insights and thoughts. As a space enthusiast, by learning about the story of academician Liu Yuanqing, we not only witness the tremendous achievements of China's aerospace industry but also see the perseverance and dedication of a scientist. Liu academician, through ups and downs, persisted in independent innovation, contributing significantly to China's aerospace development. From his experience of overcoming research difficulties under challenging conditions, we learn an optimistic and forward-looking attitude and the spirit of teamwork. His diligence, rigorous academic attitude, and adherence to the scientific spirit are undoubtedly models for each of us to learn from. So, can you find a career in your life that inspires passion and effort? Or, what expectations and contributions do you have for space technology? Let's explore together, use the story of academician Liu as inspiration, and bravely pursue the stars and the sea in our hearts. That's it for today's video. Please stay tuned for the exciting content of the next episode. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.